On the 18th of June, 2023, at 9.30 a.m., five people sat in a submarine called Titan and dove into the sea. They were going to see the wreck of the Titanic, the same historical ship Titanic that had sunk in the sea about 100 years ago. This is an extreme form of adventure tourism, and it is very expensive. Each person sitting in the submarine had spent up to $250,000 for a few hours of this tour. This trip is so expensive because Titanic's wreck is hidden deep in the sea, specifically 3,810 meters below the surface of the water. This submarine started its journey under the water. It takes about two hours to reach the depth of 3,810 meters. At every 15 minute interval, this submarine sends a signal to the support ship on the surface of the sea, named the Polar Prince. For them, this was the only communication channel with the world. On that day, the 18th of June, it had been only one hour and 45 minutes of this submarine's dive into the sea that suddenly it loses contact with the support ship on the sea. At 4.30 p.m., by the time when the submarine should have come back up after its tour, but there is no sign of it. At 7.10 p.m., the team in Polar Prince decided to inform the U.S. Coast Guard. And from here, a four-day-long multinational search began. A large-scale search and rescue operation is carried out to find this submarine. Aircraft, ships, and robot vehicles were also used. Everyone had only one question in their mind. What happened to these passengers? The U.S. Coast Guard says it's likely recovered human remains from the wreckage of the Titan. The debris is consistent with the catastrophic loss of the pressure chamber. The arrogance and the hubris that sent that ship to its doom is exactly the same thing that sent those people at that sub to their fate. Now let's understand the whole story of the Titan submersible. The place where this submarine disappeared is in the Atlantic Ocean near Canada. Look at the map. 600 kilometers away from Newfoundland, a Canadian island. At this place, in the depths of the water, you will find the wreck of the Titanic, broken into two parts, the bow and the stern both lying about 800 meters away from each other. The Titan submarine that disappeared here was not a submarine, but a submersible. These two words are very similar to each other. So till now, I was using the word submarine to simplify things. But there is a very important difference between these two words. Submarines have their own power. They can use a port to go into the sea and come out of the sea independently. But submersibles cannot do that. To launch a submersible into the water and for it to come back, a support ship is needed. A ship that is present on the surface of the water and is controlling everything. In our case, this support ship was the Polar Prince. This entire operation was run by a company called OceanGate, whose CEO was Stockton Rush. Remember their name because he plays an important role in the story. By profession, he had been an aerospace engineer, and in 2009, he founded the OceanGate Company, a private company whose purpose was to take rich people on deep sea expeditions as tourism. Walk us through sort of the mechanics, how they're gonna work. It's an expedition to survey the wreck. The uh, travelers who come out will participate in the dives, do uh, operate sonar, communication systems, uh, uh, photographs, uh, work on data. So it's a, it's a very active um, experience. This company started offering Titanic tours in July, 2021. Before this, they offered tours of other shipwrecks and areas. As you can still see on their website, apart from the Titanic, there were expeditions to Azores and Bahamas. Titan was not the only submersible of this company. Apart from this, OceanGate had two other submersibles, Antipodes and Cyclops. Antipodes could go up to a depth of 304 meter and Cyclops up to 500 meter. But Titan was designed to go down 4,000 meter, means four kilometers underwater. This is why this was the only submersible to go to the Titanic. To visualize the frightening depth of 3,800 meter, look at this chart created by the Washington Post. Measurements are in feet here. Normally, a man's height is six feet. The iceberg that collided with the Titanic was 100 feet above the surface of the water and several times that underwater. 130 feet is the maximum depth that recreational scuba divers can go to while scuba diving. After 650 feet, a twilight zone area starts where only a small amount of light can penetrate the depths of the water. 1,600 feet was the depth of the deepest ever underwater rescue operation conducted to date. 
2,600 feet is the depth where giant squids swim. Giant squids are so scary that they look like they have come from an alien planet. Look at the photos. If you go further down, a midnight zone starts after 3,800 feet. No sunlight reaches below this mark. Everything turns black after this. The water temperature here is around 4 degrees Celsius. Now, if you go further down from here, 5,000 feet, 6,000 feet, 8,000 feet, 10,000 feet, and then you finally reach 12,500 feet, here is the ocean floor where the Titanic wreck is lying. The pressure at this depth is almost 400 times the pressure on the surface. So, whichever submersible goes to this depth, its design should be thoroughly thought out. The glass for looking outside, the size of the window, could be only this big. And the window in the Titan submersible, which is called a viewport, was the biggest viewport that had been installed in any private submersible to date. The Titan submersible was not that big. It had the capacity to seat only five people. Its main body, which is called the hull, was made of carbon fiber. Two caps were attached at the end, which were made of titanium and the total length of it was approximately 6.7 meters, and it weighed more than 10,400 kilograms. In its design, as you can see, there were four electric thrusters outside, two horizontal and two vertical, through which it could be operated. Now, an interesting fact to be noted here, this sub was controlled by a video game controller. We run the whole thing with this game controller. <laughs> Come on! This is not as weird as it sounds, because the U.S. Navy also controls their submarines and the periscopes the viewports to see outside, they control them with Xbox controllers. But yes, the entire submarine, Titan, was being controlled with a video game controller. This means that the pilot who was operating the submersible in the water was also using this video game controller. If you look at the inside, there were no seats to sit inside it, but a small toilet was provided, which was beside the viewport. But there was no barrier to the toilet. So they literally said that if someone had to use the toilet, so all the rest of the people should turn their faces to the other side. To keep looking at a TV screen while the toilet was being used. This is the only toilet available on a deep diving submersible. Best seat in the house. You can look out the viewport. We put a privacy screen in, turn up the music. Because these submersibles go so deep into the water, the GPS doesn't work here. The communication to their support ship was carried on through a text messaging system. It is still unclear which internet connection was available on the ship. In this tweet from a few back, OceanGate had said that they were using Starlink's satellite internet service to communicate. If we come back to this story of the 18th of June, then five people were on board this submersible that day. The first was 58-year-old British billionaire Hamish Harding. He was an adventurer and a three-time Guinness World Record holder. In 2016, he went to the South Pole with astronaut Buzz Aldrin. At one time, he did a four-hour dive into the deepest part of the ocean, Mariana Trench. And last year, he was part of the Blue Origin suborbital flight, which was started by the space exploration company of Jeff Bezos. The second passenger was Paul Henry Narjolet, 77 years old, a former commander of the French Navy. He had visited the Titanic wreck 37 times, he was the director of underwater research of the RMS Titanic. The third and fourth passengers were a British Pakistani businessman, Shahzada Dawood, and his 19-year-old son, Suleiman. He was the owner of one of the biggest companies in Pakistan. Suleiman's aunt had said that Suleiman was actually scared of going, but he went with his father to please him and to give him company on this journey. As I told you that day, the submersible was communicating with the support ship at every 15-minute interval. This communication stopped at 11.15 a.m. After this, no communication and no signal is received. Despite this, it was expected that the Titan would resurface at 4.30 p.m. as scheduled. Because if by chance, this submersible would get stuck in the water, there was a way for the passengers to tilt it from inside and push it back and forth to bring it back up. This is done by removing the ballasts. Ballasts are an important part of big ships and submarines to provide stability. They are nothing more than heavyweights. With their help, submarines can descend into the water. In the olden days, stones and sandbags were used as ballasts. But today, submarines use water ballasts. 
Ballast tanks are filled with water so that the weight increases and the submarines sink into the water. At 4.30 p.m., when the Titan did not resurface, people in the support ship waited for a while and then notified the U.S. Coast Guard at 7.10 p.m. After this began the great race, the race against time. 96 hours, only four days of oxygen supply was available in Titan. So if a rescue operation had to be conducted, they only had four days to find the passengers alive. Often an emergency locator is installed on ships, which is called Emergency Position Indicating Radio Beacon, EPIRB. With the help of this, these vessels can be located, but it was not installed in Titan. Here, another problem was that even if Titan would have come back to the surface of the sea, people sitting inside it would have died due to the lack of oxygen, because there was no way to open this submersible from the inside. You heard it right. The door of this submersible could only be locked from the outside and opened from the outside. So whether the submersible was inside the water or on the surface, those four days were very critical. The crew closes the hatch from the outside with 17 bolts. There's no other way out. Along with that, the search area was 25,000 kilometers. Imagine how difficult it is to find a van-sized submersible in such a huge area. And the deepest underwater rescue that has been done so far was only done till the depth of 480 meters underwater in 1973. But still, the rescue teams put their lives at stake. Initially, two American and two Canadian aircraft started this operation. Sonar was deployed by them so that they could detect signals even from underwater. Three ships started the search from the surface, but as time passed, more ships started coming in for the search operation. Some remotely operated vehicles, that is ROVs, were also used here. Think of them like basically a robot-type vehicles. No one sits inside it, but they can dive into the water and find things. And they are controlled from the surface of the water. Three ROVs were searching for Titan. After three days of searching, on the third day of the search operation, a sonar from a Canadian aircraft heard some banging noises. In half-hour intervals, some sounds were heard, like someone knocking on the door. Later, the U.S. Coast Guard also heard the sounds. Finally, on the 22nd of June, an ROV searching on the ocean floor encountered some debris, around 490 meters away from Titanic's bow. It was confirmed upon seeing the debris that the submersible had broken apart. The people who sitting inside it had lost their lives. After searching some more, five pieces of debris were found in total. On the same day, the U.S. Coast Guard confirmed in a press conference that the banging noises they heard had nothing to do with this Titan submersible. Actually, the conclusion that was derived was that Titan imploded due to high pressure. You might be thinking that implosion means bursting, but it is actually the opposite of an explosion. We use the word explosion when there is an outbreak or eruption like a bomb explosion. The force moves outwards, but the force of an implosion moves inwards, breaking apart due to being squeezed in. That is implosion. And catastrophic implosion means that the implosion happened so fast that the entire structure was destroyed, but it didn't even take a millisecond. This means that the people sitting in it were killed immediately in the blink of an eye, but they didn't feel it. The question here is, what was the reason behind this implosion? Actually, the main body of the Titan, as I said, it was made of carbon fiber. But usually, submarines and submersibles are made of steel, titanium, or aluminium. This carbon fiber design of Titan was an experimental design. No one had ever tested the properties of carbon fiber in such depths of the ocean before. And looking at this disaster, we can say that carbon fiber is not a suitable material for this use case. As said by an ocean explorer, Robert Ballard, the man who discovered the wreck of the Titanic in 1985, he said that they have done thousands of dives in different vehicles to get to the bottom of the ocean, but they have never lost a vehicle. This was the first time that a submarine or a submersible imploded in this way. If you look at our history, it's safer to be in a submarine like Alvin that I spent many years in than driving on I-95. James Cameron, the director of famous films like Titanic and Avatar, has been to the deep sea many times for various expeditions. He said the same thing. The caps of titanium were still intact on the seafloor unharmed, but the main body of carbon fiber is now scattered in pieces. 
He strongly criticized Titan, saying that safety regulations were not followed. If you see the old interviews of Ocean Gate Company's CEO, you will hear the same thing again and again. In 2019, a long article was published in Smithsonian Magazine in which the CEO was talking about Ocean Gate. He said that the U.S. Passenger Vessel Safety Act of 1993 was needlessly prioritizing passenger safety over commercial innovation. He felt that this act is useless and that there is no need to pay so much attention to safety. In another interview last year, he said, at some point, safety just is pure waste. I mean, if you just want to be safe, don't get out of bed. Don't get in your car. Don't do anything. You know, at some point, safety just is pure waste. I mean, if you just want to be safe, don't get out of bed. Don't get in your car. Don't do anything. After this, he says, I've broken some rules to make Titan. I think I've broken them with logic and good engineering behind me. I've broken some rules to make this. I think I've broken them with, with logic and good engineering behind me, the carbon fiber and titanium. The rules stated that carbon fiber and titanium were not to be used, but he used them, broke the rule intentionally. Stockton Rush knew that he was conducting an experiment which could be very dangerous. In January 2018, Ocean Gate's Director of Marine Operations, David Lockridge, had actually mentioned safety concerns about Titan Submersible. And when Ocean Gate did not pay any heed to the warnings, he went to court with it. In the court, he stated that there should be a safety assessment and certification of this submersible. But Ocean Gate refused. He said that this company was not interested in spending money on safety. The legal battle in the court was eventually settled later in 2018. But on the 27th of March, 2018, 36 people wrote a letter to Stockton Rush. The letter was written by industry leaders, deep sea explorers, oceanographers, and such other people. They said that the experimental approach being taken, not getting things quality checked, can lead to a terrible accident someday. In March 2018, another deep sea exploration specialist had written a mail to the CEO to be a little conservative about safety. He had written that Rush was putting himself and his clients in danger. In the race to reach the Titanic, Rush was accused of repeating the same phrase. She is unsinkable. I told you in the Titanic video that people used to blindly believe that the ship was so great that it can never sink, that it was unsinkable. But on that ill-fated day, the ship sank. And now the same happened with the Titan. In the pages of history, the name of Stockton Rush has now been included in this list. List of inventors who were killed by their own inventions. This teaches us that safety standards and regulations should never be ignored. If you found this video informative, you can click here to watch the video on Titanic in which I tell you the entire story of the Titanic from start to finish. Thank you very much.